Hello and welcome back to my channel. As the followers of my channel probably already know that I have just bought an R1, a Yamaha R1 a few weeks back in November 2023 to be precise. And in February 2024, Yamaha kind of drops a bombshell that the Yamaha R1 and the R1M will be discontinued from 2025. Now, this came as a shocker for a lot of people. It will primarily be discontinued in Europe because of the Euro 5 Plus compliance. It seems that there is no so-called official word from Yamaha yet, but there is a press release. I'll just read it out to you. The press release has been published in the website called motorcycle.com. This is why from 2025, considering the challenge of meeting the Euro 5 plus homologation requirements in Europe, the R1 will be made available with specifications aimed exclusively at track use as was done previously with the R6. Now, some of you are probably already aware, I made a video on the new R6 that is an off-road machine. You are, it is not road legal, even in the United States and it is for track use only. Yamaha is taking the R1 the same route as the R6 and the R1 would be discontinued, unfortunately. A lot of people are saying that this is the end of an era, there's been an iconic motorcycle. Most of it is partly true and I also feel a little bit of, you know, kind of melancholic because I have been riding an R1 for 18 years now. Going back to the history of R1, it was one of the first bikes with an inline Ford that actually translated the world superbike motorcycle onto the streets way back in 1998 with a 998 cc engine and it was available to the masses to the people and it became extremely popular and that's how the icon developed and over time there were various iterations for example in 2002 you had the fuel injection coming in in 2004 you had the famous underseat exhaust and so on and so forth. In 2009, you had the cross-plane crankshaft. That's the one which I own right now, the cross-plane crankshaft. I bought, of course, a 2023 model. Love my R1. Now, how do owners of R1 are currently feeling right now? I really don't know. I feel, as I said, I feel kind of melancholic and I do feel that it's going to be a, the end of an era. Now, what does it mean for bikers like you and me? And what does it mean actually for uh, regular people? And what is probably Yamaha thinking of replacing it. Now, it's true that people like you and me would not have access anymore to the R1 to ride in the streets. Now, let's put things in a little bit of perspective. It says for the Euro 5 plus homologation in Europe only as of now. That does not necessarily mean that Yamaha R1 won't be available in America. America has slightly different emission norms, it seems, because you see the Jixa 1000 has also been discontinued in Europe, in many countries, but still it is available in America. The Jixa 1000 and the Jixa 1000 R, both bikes are, av are available in America right now. As for the R1, beyond 2025, it's tough to say, but I am speculating that it would still be available for some more years. Now, as far as the race homologation goes, the race homologation is still valid till January 2028, which means the bike may still be available technically for sale on the streets. The primary reason for discontinuing the R1 and the R1M is not just the Euro 5 Plus homologation. It seems that the sales are, have been dwindling. Now, if you look at the history a little bit, you will see that the R1 sold 14,000 units in, in UK alone way back in 2004. It was the highest selling Superbike in 2004. Currently, I don't have numbers for United States, but I have numbers for UK. And 2014 onwards, there has been a steady decline of numbers to such an extent, I think two years ago, it was in 2022, UK sold just 40 motorcycles in the entire year. These bikes are premium bikes. There's a lot of money that goes into manufacturing their epitome of motorcycle technology. It is not really cheap to manufacture them. So it is a premium, it is a luxury item, it costs a lot of money and there aren't too many people who are willing to shell out that kind of money to buy this kind of a motorcycle. Fortunately though we still have the uh, ZX-10Rs and the Panigales of the world. What is going to replace the R1? We don't yet know but there are speculations that there will be an MT-09 which will be fully fared with the Supersports chassis and body and all of that 
that will come as probably an R9 but that as of now it's just speculations over the past couple of years and we don't really know. Look, I have owned and ridden an MT-09 for several years now till it got stolen. It's a great bike, but it's no R1. I mean, the thrill of being able to hit 300 kilometers an hour, that's about 190 miles an hour, it's, it, you will never get it on an MT-09. An R9, which would be developed from probably an MT-09, will not be the same as an R1. It will be Euro 5 plus compliant, but it will not be an R1. What are the recent trends now of motorcycles? The recent trends are bikes like R7. Now R7 is the fully fared version of the MT-07, which is a 73 horsepower, 67 Newton meters of torque motorcycle, not necessarily a full-blown super sports. Our R7 supposedly replaced the R6. And there were even customers coming to me saying that, oh, I want to buy the R7 because it is not an R6. But that does not necessarily mean that the R7 is a faster, better bike than R6. No, R7 is more accessible. It is cheaper. It is not as fast or not as, let's say, overwhelming. The R6, another legend, discontinued, only available in an off-road version, only, no, not, a, not a street legal motorcycle. Whereas the R7, well, it's a good bike. Nothing compared to an R6, which had 130 horsepower. This is 73 horsepower, no comparison at all. So let's not even get there. So similarly, the, if the R1 is replaced by the R9, the R9 would be powerful enough to make you feel really good, but it's, it will not be an R1 still. Now, there are also speculations about Jonathan Rear's career who just joined uh, Yamaha and will be riding the World Superbike R1. I'm not bothered about Jonathan Rear's career. They're, they're multi-millionaires. I really don't care what Jonathan Rear does. What I'm bothered about, people like you and me who actually go to a dealership, buy a motorcycle and ride it on the streets, I'm more bothered about that. Yes, the R1 would be available for race only. That is true, but that's not a bike that we will be able to, let's say, ride around in the streets at all ever again maybe but for united states we might still just have a few more years left let's see how it goes i'm pretty glad that i own the r1 right now i'm very happy with my motorcycle yeah i hope to keep it as long as possible if you're an r1 owner let me know what you think about this yamaha's decision of discontinuing the r1 would it still be continued to sell in united states how do you think things will be growing? Do leave your comments in the comment section down below. And I'm very keen to see your comments, your discussion, your opinion. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. Until then, ride safe.